Welcome back to the classroom. Come on in. No late pass required. Today, we are continuing our watch through of Star Wars Tales of the Jedi with episode two titled Justice. Now, I know in episode one, we got to see uh, a bit of the origins of Ahsoka, um, her incredible mother, um, and just some of the incredible things that led to her discovering that she was, in fact, a Jedi. Um, if you missed that, make sure to check the card up in the top right hand corner over here. But um, if I saw in the preview uh, properly here, um, this will not deal with Ahsoka. This will actually be dealing with Dooku in this upcoming episode here, along with a young Qui-Gon Jinn. And so I'm wondering, we're getting kind of origin story of Ahsoka, and then we're getting the fall of Dooku. And uh, I'm really excited to see this. No idea what they're going to be covering in this. Obviously, they're probably going to be showing how like Qui-Gon kind of got his differing viewpoints i'm sure and how dooku started to maybe unravel his belief in how the jedi worked i'm curious to see how this ends up working so um i think we're just gonna get into it so without further ado let's jump right into the video I love like the kind of quiet open that Lucasfilm does now. And obviously I love this part too. Uh, they've really nailed down the animation since the start of the Clone Wars series. Yep, there's Dooku. And young Qui-Gon, look at that. Be arriving shortly, Master. Tensions are high enough. Yes, Master. How they somehow do sound like younger versions of their characters I, that will always impress me that they manage to find people like that man even his get up very uh very similar to what we see in their older counterparts oh man oh jeez what is happening here place looks like it's seen better days wonder if natural disaster or if people are not treating it well like what's happening there's a lot of death and decay excuse me sorry to trouble oh not welcome here <laughs> Not enjoying the visitors. Jeez, just covered in filth. The astromech barely seems to be registering that they're there. Oh, are they? Yeah. Are they holding the senator's son? Oh, never mind. Why Thought they were holding somebody we else. You? Allow me to make my intentions clear. Oh. Already kind of showing a threat. We are here to help resolve the situation. He is one of the longest standing senators in the Republic. Yes, and when you entered this village, you could see the effects of his long standing policies. Oh, got it. If you don't like him, why not elect a new senator? Yeah, <laughs> something tells me you can't. It were that simple. Come, I will show you where the senator's son is. You're one of the kidnappers. Uh, they all are. It's an entire town. They all are. Yeah. Some morally gray areas. That. Ow. Oh. I already can see where we're heading here. And so clearly the senator is not popular and he's kept himself in office way longer than he should be. Your ordeal will soon be over. It's not much of an ordeal. Not compared to how these people are living. And oh, wow. You were not aware of these conditions. How could my father allow this to happen to his people? Even the kidnapped individual. You. 
What choice do they have? Wow. The senator. He's here. And he's brought soldiers. Our coming here was not known to the senator. Oh boy. The senator will do anything to stay in power. He looks he looks like a jerk. Oh, the one with the dog. She is hungry. Many would do the same. Wow. I'm afraid our investigation is not yet complete, Senator. Investigation? They abducted my son. I demand his release. Uh, no, it's not that simple. Let me assure you your <laughs> son is in no immediate danger. Guards! Uh, yeah, tension's getting to a, a bit of a head here. Oh, they're scared. They're just doing what they can to defend themselves. We cannot. You serve the Senate. No, we serve the people of this Republic. That's a big difference there. Show me. Yeah, that's not gonna be smart. Even these guys are like not very confident in it. Ah, that's cool. Seeing his lightsaber blue is kind of cool. Will not. Wow. Oh man. Well, we can see where. Suku started to kind of get his corrupt ideology. Not even corrupts. He saw the corruption. He attacked Jedi. I don't think that's uh, going to be forgiven in the Senate. Ooh, Duke is going to do something dark side, isn't he? And make an example. Oh. <laughs> oh. Not even you, Master Jedi. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Master. Oh, my. I. Yeah, no. That makes total sense to me. Master. It's over. And the differences between the two of them. Father, how could you do this? Yeah. These are your people. Our people. Uh, that's the main difference, I would say, between Dooku and Qui-Gon there. They have similar ideologies, but Dooku doesn't have a limit in that regard of how far to go. I'd say at this point more chaotic good than anything if I had to put a put a bit I to it. Allow your suffering to continue. Yeah, hang your head in shame, buddy. It's a brief bit of thanks. Oh, the guards are actually helping, which is good. Oh. Any meaningful change will come of this. Your actions saved many lives today. Just thinking in the moment, Master. Well then, you're a much wiser man than I, Qui Gon Jin. Yeah. Teachings. <sighs> yeah, that. I think Dooku was being sincere when he said he needed Qui Gon's help and wishes he was there. When the Clone Wars broke out. Yep. Uh, so, uh, we just finished watching the episode Justice for Tales of the Jedi. And I find myself very much lost in thought over this episode. Um, it's not bombastic. It's not grandiose. It's more than anything. It's... A very small part of a much bigger story 
And you know, honestly, this is why I love the creative team that we see with Dave Filoni and um, him working obviously with Jon Favreau and many of the others that are now kind of at the reins of the whole Star Wars universe. Um, they're getting to explore these areas. Like these are stories like, did we fully need them? No. Do they make things better? Absolutely. It is really tying in that like, Dooku, I, I truly believe at first felt like he was doing some good. And it really does seem like a lot of dark side users with obviously some exceptions started off as genuinely good people who wanted to do the right thing and went too far with their ideologies. And Dooku, I would I would almost argue is a is a tragic character. He is somebody who truly did want positive change to happen. And we can see that him, you know, calling out the corruption of the senator in this episode really does fit very well with what his ideology is like later on. He did. He still does talk about how the Republic, the Senate are it's just filled with corrupt individuals who do not care about the people that they rule over and only care about themselves. And that's kind of what this episode is about. We see him attempting to do the right thing here. You can already see like he's a little more unorthodox than a typical Jedi with negotiations. We obviously see like the town in ruins. And even at that point, he goes up and immediately kind of threatens the people at the bar who have all participated in the kidnapping of the senator's son and just sets his lightsaber down is like, I'm here to negotiate. And everyone else looks around and they're like, oh, it's a Jedi. OK, geez, that makes this a little more serious. But like at the same time, like what Jedi would come in and immediately put their lightsaber on the table and say, all right, where's the sun? Like that's a, that's not something that a typical Jedi, I feel, would actually do in a sense. And obviously we see where Qui-Gon gets a lot of his more unorthodox um, and morally gray uh, teachings and uh, practices that we see in things like episode one. And all of this to kind of say that this was an episode of unexpected occurrences. The son actually willingly like sitting there and just like, yeah, no, I'm in no rush to be out of here. Like you see the conditions that these people are in. I didn't even know that my father was neglecting them as much as he was. So like right now, the best thing that I can possibly do is be here because then maybe some change can happen. And you even see Dooku and Qui-Gon kind of pause and question for a moment. Like, wait, so you don't actually mind being kidnapped? And it's, it really does seem like it's almost an unspoken mutual agreement between the Senator's son and all the people of this town. Like they are in desperation and he sees the desperation. And he's like, I'm going to do what I can to help because I'm a better person than my father is. And that unfortunately is when we see the father roll in with armed forces and, you know, a nice armor in, you know, very regal royal looking attire and just starts trying to fire on all of these folks and just blast them away and get his son back and like has no care and no cares in the world about not only fighting against Jedi, but also killing his own people just for the sake of his own selfish personal gain. And this is when we see Dooku really lose it. We see a break in the facade Yet at the same time, I really do think that Dooku is somebody who is at this moment in time more of a chaotic good. The ends justify the means and him force choking the senator here, which is very much not a thing that the Jedi should do. Yes, is him in a state of anger, but he never seems to fully lose control either. He always seems to be in control of himself and the situation around him. And it's really only when the son comes out and says like, you know, please don't kill my father. You can see him kind of like shake it off a little bit, stops choking his father out. 
And then the senator's son immediately turns on the senator and says, how could you do something like this? Like you are the one who was at fault here. And so clearly we see that his means are working. Now, does it mean that he might have gone too far? Absolutely. But at the same time, he did what he felt was necessary. He did what he thought was right. And that really does speak volumes as to why Qui-Gon is the way that he is as well. Why he teaches and yet is not on the council, even though he is considered really the most Jedi of Jedi. <laughs> like... This is the person who Luke expected to see when meeting Yoda, like it is more of like a Qui-Gon-esque figure. And yet some of the most do-gooder Jedi are the ones who break the rules, who don't follow what the Jedi have taught for so long. And it sure it also starts to show the limits of the Jedi. And we see this discussed even further as well when we see how Anakin starts to become disillusioned. And so we, we see it all kind of going down the tiers here. Dooku teaching Qui-Gon, teaching Obi-Wan, teaching Anakin. All of this listed down is just showing like the, the flaws of the Jedi can really be shown through the, in a, in a sense, the generational trauma. And so it brings up some interesting topics of conversation here and once again I have to thank people like Dave Filoni for bringing these thought-provoking pieces of Star Wars to us like yes there is some Star Wars out there that is all about like blowing stuff up and I totally love it but this is the Star Wars that always intrigues me where it makes you think about who are the actual good guys and who are the actual bad guys might not be as morally black and white as we initially thought so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know some of your theories here. Um, any connections that I might have missed between this and some of the movies as well. And uh, if you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe so you let me know that you are enjoying this and so that you don't miss out on anything. But in the meantime, class, you are officially dismissed and I will see you in the next video. Peace out, everybody.